Hello there and welcome to the first of two episodes of Four Times Our Podcast that you'll hear this weekend. Well, before Sunday anyway. Going to split these two episodes into one will be a match reaction to last night's game against Alkmaar and then we'll release a separate episode for the Glasgow Derby preview. So we'll start with the first one. It finished in Alkmaar 2-1 to AZ. Celtic took the lead through Kyogo Furuhashi just two minutes on the clock when he scored but not long after that Celtic had some calamitous defensive mistakes that had led to the Dutch side taking a 2-1 lead into half time but through a mix of Alkmaar not being able to break Celtic down and just Celtic generally being a bit more defensively organised in the second half I would say Celtic did advance through the tie they went through 3-2 and that has seen them drawn in a Europa League group with Bayer Leverkusen Real Betis and Ferenc Svaros so we'll come on to the group itself after we've covered the game Danny but I'll start with you it was it, it, it was a perfect start for Celtic last night but then it soon reverted to Celtic away from home in Europe and it was a nervy nervy night uh, it was a great start you know you couldn't have fought a bit a start of the all week when you're thinking how's the game going to go because it's often said games at half time and that two nothing such a bit two nothing in a two leg tie is such a is a precarious lead at times and because all it takes is a goal and the you know the ties in the balance again so to score early on was great and we away goals it probably would have killed the tie without away goals there's always that you know hope for the other team but I don't know I just I I was so I was so angry at Celtic last night for 60 minutes it, and I kept saying I was talking to him I was going daft watching it at the telly I kept saying to myself I know Ange wants to do this and he wants to do that but I couldn't after 7 minutes I couldn't believe what I was watching I just thought when you score so early it's, it's no anti football it's no bad you know Michael Stewart was right it's no bad players it's no bad a bad system you don't even need to change your system you don't even need to change your formation or whatever just fucking have some common sense and get your foot in the ball and, but it's as if just the one thing you don't do is let the team back in the game and that's exactly you know one it's not even it's just a hopeful punt up the park Welsh gets caught like Welsh kind of is getting away with it a wee bit because of Joe, Joe Hart's partnering but if Welsh is I think Welsh's movement's very very poor I think after the ball Welsh can be got at and I think a couple of times last night they did get him but he just looked completely lost the ball hits him and then Hart's just got to come out and clear it he's just got to come out and clear these lines I don't know what, what he was doing I don't, he just seemed to be waiting and waiting I think maybe he thought the ball was coming quicker I don't know maybe just a lapse in concentration but people seem to throw the towel in my heart I thought Joe Hart went on he, he made at least two great saves in that game after it but I don't know I just felt like a mistake like that's been kind of bubbling with a Celtic team because we're still learning how to play like that but second goal was just bonkers I mean He's not even on staff out, he's not even under any pressure. It's not even that good a cross in. It's like and just another hopeful ball into an area and hoping that Celtic make a mistake or somebody gets on the end of it and that's exactly what happened. And then not I just couldn't I couldn't believe that like, do you know that way when you're playing and you're under heavy pressure and the team had a cross out of the park for a goal kick. And when you're at a game and when you're watching the telly, you can hear the collective sigh of relief for the fans as if right, we're going to get out. But then Hart's playing the ball. 10 yards to Starfield or Welsh who look up and they've got two men coming at them they're playing it to the fullback who Montgomery who I thought was brilliant I thought he was great plenty dig plenty of effort one of in, you know brilliant all the, all, all the credit to him but it's like he's looking up and he's got three men coming at him so he gives it to McGregor which is probably you know McGregor will do the right next thing you know they've got a throw in 20 yards out for a goal and it just it was rinse and repeat for 60 minutes and I must admit, it was like Bersheva. I thought we were out at, at 2 1. I thought well, there was only one way this was going. And I was coming on here to go through Postacoglu for no having the common sense, just to no shut up shop and play defensive football, but just have, just have a system or have people in there that can actually do something with it. But at half time, I was, I was mad, Andy. I know you weren't the best pleased, but for 60 minutes, I'd agree with you. I, I think going forward, into the group and, and into Sunday it's alright live by the sword die by the sword but you need to be good in different situations I think I agree with, with what you're saying it's got to be horses for courses at times and on the sort of the goal with Welsh and Hart I completely agree with you and I made that point to you earlier that I feel that Welsh is t- slipping under the radar for his part in that there I mean as a defender it's the ball's in the air and I feel as if constantly we always let the ball bounce and I'll never understand it it's one of the first things was that a young boys learning football? Do not let that fucking ball bounce in situations like that. And he's 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 watching it, and it just hits off him. 
like either stick your head on it, put it back to the keeper, or fuck it out the park. Do something with it. Don't just do nothing and let the ball hit you. And that's exactly what he done. And then of course Joe Hart as well. He's been caught sleeping. I, I don't know, like like you said, I don't know if you thought there was more pace on the ball. But again, that all comes from the ball being allowed to bounce. And I think listen, Hart fully deserves the criticism for that goal. It was it was a terrible, terrible mistake. And you see, you get punished for it, but well, she's get away with it. And, and I, th- I think he shouldn't have avoided the criticism for that either. But it was just a lot of it for me last night was just sort of things being shown up for for what we've all known. It's, it's been great. Some of the, the some of the attacking football we've been playing since and she came in is phenomenal. And to get through that tie in obviously such a short period of time, like if you'd have told us a few weeks back that with that eleven on the part, Ange would have got us through that tie against AZ Alkmaar would. There'd been a lot of doubt around it. It's a very, very impressive thing that he's done. But last night showed for a lot of where the frailties and vulnerabilities in that team. That the whole back four was was rotten. To be honest with you, they were constantly getting got at too many times. No getting to the second ball. Too many times letting the ball bounce, flying into tackles, and just completely irrational at times in the way we were doing it's like you say see just a calmer head a more experienced head and I mean I know it's probably what Starfield and, and Hart sh- should really be at the back there just telling them to kill the game a wee bit times just get your foot in the ball and move the ball but whereas it, it just sometimes it, it was just like watching the game through your fingers almost and I think a lot of that was it's just been lost but again it was it was a dream start an absolute dream start and it's just it's not the first time we've seen it this season it won't be the last year it's a bad do it wide where a ball across the, across the goal to Furuhashi who's tapped it in which is brilliant I mean, like you say it's just at that moment experience should come in for, 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 your, for your senior players and it should be the right. Let's just get the fit in the ball. Don't let it in frantic. Don't let it become sort of this mental game. And, and that's that's what happened. It slipped. And then before you know it, we're backs to the wall and fucking shitting ourselves for, for the rest of the game. But listen, that's why we've, been out and we've signed a new right back because you know, like, <laughs> Ralston is the answer. And games like that will show that up. It's the reason we're We've actually went out. I don't know if the boy for Shamrock will be any good. I, I hope he is. I, I've seen a lot of the usual people are writing him off because of the league that he's came for, which is fucking nonsense. But that that's why we're going to try to sign players. And I trust that if, if Ange wanted them and we've got them, and that he'll hopefully be an improvement in the left back situation. But the game at Sale, listen, it's, it's say like away from home in Europe. It's, it's always going to be difficult. And well, Ange has done brilliant. He's not a miracle worker, but he's got us through the tie, which is the most important thing. We've been handed a tough group, which again we'll come on to. But the most important thing for me was the result when we got it. But there was a lot shown in that team. Darn, just to get back to yourself. But for me, it was. I don't know if that game will probably be an indicator to Ange. But for me, against teams like that, when it is a bit, they're going to have a lot more of the ball. They're the home team. They're a very, very good team. Pumble and Rogic on in the same midfield. I felt hurt us quite a lot because listen the two of them don't have the best work rate but to play the type of football that Ange wants to play I felt as if too many times we were just getting overran in there because McGregor was trying to do too much himself because the legs weren't next to him I, I completely agree with what you're saying about the midfield but just to like I know quite often some people have had a go at us for saying that we we all sing through the same hymn sheet and don't really like sort of argue against what each other's saying. I, I I just think it's really harsh what you're saying about the defence, Andy. I know we spoke about it last night in the day off air, so I think we're as well doing it on there as well. I just I think to say the back four was rotten that like, extremely harsh. I think they made two massive errors in the first half, which nobody's nobody's disputing that. And as you say, they've already brought an R right back in, so how long Ralston's in the team remains to be seen. But I just thought for the the most part, especially in the second half, I thought they defended very well. I thought they were winning most things in the air. They were throwing themselves in front of everything. And I know you don't want to be back to the wall against teams at any point, never mind for the sustained period that we were. But I just thought that it's sort of, I don't think I gave much credit to Altmar because ultimately when Celtic come up against these better sort of opposition that they don't face week in, week out, then there is going to be times and games where we are. And look, obviously... I know for probably the first 60 minutes we were right up against it after we scored, but I, I thought I thought they came right in here. Even guys like Starfelt, like I know well, I've been quite critical of Starfelt on here. I thought he's had a pretty poor start to his Celtic career, but I thought the second half he picked up. I thought Welsh again was like he's, he's still an inexperienced guy and it's going to, but he's going to make mistakes. But I, I just thought they sort of did redeem themselves a bit and 
I think Manson composed themselves. They were relatively unscathed. But I know I'd, in, I'd include Tartar in that back four, back five sort of combination as well. I just thought the save he made, especially the one just before half time, I thought was an excellent save. And then he made a good one in the second half as well. But no, I, I just, Andy, I just wanted to say that. I just, because. I just think it's extremely harsh, especially when uh, this is a lot doing it with recruitment as well and the pace that has gone that hasn't helped. But the fact that seventy five percent of that defence that finished last night has come through the academy, I thought I thought they stood up very well to it. And although the the top quality that's going to get us in the Champions League in seasons to come, uh, it remains to be seen. I, I would I would fear for them against a better quality opposition. But I just thought I thought that Alkmaar were. I thought they were a decent team in both legs and sort of when you're up against decent teams and you're going to have games like that when you're against uh, backs against the wall I, I don't know I don't think it's harsh to see it because ultimately I think you mentioned two Joe Hart saves there listen they were they were tremendous saves and for me Joe Hart redeemed his mistake with the saves and, and if, if not for him and if it was one of the other two diddies that we've got like, Pretend they play as goalkeepers, then Altmar would have scored four and through the tie. Due to defensive errors, I thought Altmar were wasteful at times, and they did at times carve us up, carve us up and carve us open a wee bit. And for me, they targeted the fullback areas to do that. In terms of it, it was just the, the con, we did it all the time, and it's, it's the setting balls and letting the ball bounce constantly. But even for, specifically for the way that we sort of now play the game and play football. That's another defender, first and foremost, I've got to defend. But the, there's no air of calmness about them. It's, it was just felt for me panicking, sheer panic, which I just, I know they're young and 100% I get that. But they've got, they had to just calm it down and kill the game a wee bit. Just show that, listen, it's no stuff they don't know because you see them do it against lesser opposition. You've seen them, you've seen the, the boys play in teams. They've, they've been around for long enough. They've been coached by. Do you know what I mean? Like, no, no all of them, but like, Starfield came for a, a league that's better than my own in Russia. Ralston was about playing under Rodgers. Like, it's no stuff these guys haven't heard before. It's just for me, like, at times they need to... I don't know if it's the occasion or if it's just the, the thought in their head that they're, they're playing a team that probably, maybe, I don't know, maybe on paper they should, they should be beating them. I, I don't know where it comes from, but it's... It's just mental to watch at times, and that's when you want. I want my senior players to step up, and, and if they need to help them through the game, then do that. But as I said, the, the most important thing we, we was what we came through, and I thought that Montgomery was was brilliant when he came on. That, as far as I was aware, he, he obviously wasn't a left back, and he's sort of forming into that. And I mean, the last the last guy that we had who was a winger and formed in a left back was Calvin Miller. We all we all know how that went, but he's looked Montgomery's looked to just take it in his stride and I, I wanted to obviously pick up on him and, and give him all the plaudits because he deserved it to go into a game of that magnitude that I think he's only 19 year old and especially when I think it was about the half an hour mark or something like that he came on, maybe sort of 25 minutes half an hour he came on and he's seen how the game was going as well bar that goal we scored to the start it, it sort of became Celtic like getting deeper and deeper and he would have known that it's going to be sort of backs against the wall type stuff and he came on and I thought he performed ad- admirably considering his age that was just something I wanted to pick up on as well but Tony we'll come to you just your thoughts in the game and obviously what we've already spoke about I guess you can look at certain parts in isolation overall really impressed that we managed to win the tie against Alba and I think the players and the management deserve credit for it because I don't think that backline is a team that you would have expected to get into the Europa League because it's, it's pretty, it still needs a lot of work. So I a lot of credit to them. I thought the two goals we lost were absolutely ridiculous. I thought Joe Hart was completely sleeping. I don't know what he was doing for that. Why he's not coming out and just whacked it as hard as possible. Just dead stupid. And then Starfelt, he's a, he's kind of starting to look a bit like Shane Duffy. Where every game he plays, he's he's uh, bringing unwanted attention to himself. There was concerns, but. We all knew they were there. We all knew that it was going to be a hard game. Posta Coglu is never going to change his style of play. That's obvious. He's always going to play it for the back. And when it works, it's brilliant. When it does not, it's very frustrating. I think the board have let him down. I think he's qualified in spite of the board. I don't think the board have backed him the way they should have done. I think he's, he needed Juranovic in quicker. He possibly needed Scales in quicker. And maybe somebody else. So I think he's done very well with the resources he's got. He could easily have fell to bits after Midland and, and Hearts. He could have, he could have fell away. But he's bounced back well. No, obviously, we get beat last night, but it doesn't really matter. We've qualified for the group stage, which is great. It would have been a brass neck to end up in the Conference League. 
so now it's a case of obviously kicking on and on to Sunday and Scales has come in now the, the Greek uh, strikers apparently coming in I don't know if Edward's going to go the other way Aye, there's still defensive worries I thought Callum McGregor was rotten I thought he was really poor I said that on the, the Twitter spaces we done last night I thought he was miles at it which was a shame but I thought Christie was really good I thought Edward changed the game I thought Postecoglou's game management was good and we seen out the tie quite comfortably in the end, barring that one sitter they missed. But I think if we were a bit better in attack, we would have scored as well or scored more. Kyogo miles ahead of everybody at times, I think. Just such a really good football player. I think you'll see that kind of goal a lot and behind with Abada and then just cutting that across for Kyogo to tap in. Delighted for him. I thought Abada got a bit lost, but high pressure game he still gets his assist and I guess the Kyogo goal is, is the one that wins the tie so as far as I know we've got out here without any injuries but a couple of weeks ago the thought of getting AZ Alkmaar before we even played Jablonek we were all saying oh well we're, we're beat so with the resources he had I thought I thought he'd done very well to beat a, a good AZ team I think they'll probably go quite far in the conference if they play the full team Ah, you mentioned quite a bit there. Just and uh, just one person that Tony did bring up that I like to highlight as well because I thought he was very good when he came on was the heavily speculated about odds on Edward. I know he didn't start the game, but I thought as much as Celtic were still under pressure eh, to what, especially like the last ten minutes. But I thought when Edward came off the bench, he sort of really gave the team an outball and calmed things down a bit and. I'm not saying it was a pivotal moment in the tie, but it, it certainly helped having a guy like Edward been able to come off the bench last night. Hundred percent, actually, I did think that was that was a major moment for us because, like you say, it's, it's somebody who he can hold the ball up, he, he can take that pressure off off of the back line, and he did that. It provided that sort of calm and presence up the top of the park, and that, that bit of respite for us that really was much needed, and it showed sort of the impact and sort of one of the many aspects of his game he, he never scored he's a striker but in some you get the people who automatically think that means a striker can't have a good game but what he did do was was help see 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 out the tie and I thought that was it was a really good substitution by Ange it was Robert you came on for but I, that, that, I definitely think it showed the value that he's got and if obviously listen nobody knows what's going to happen with him and we've been so linked and I know this, the stories have come out in the last hour or so that it looks to be with We've reached an, an agreement for the Greek guy, which we would all think means Eddie's away, but but who knows? Maybe the board have took some funny juice and that's Griffiths' replacement. Who knows? We can only hope. But I, I think it showed the importance of him and it's got to be putting him in contention to start for, for the game at the weekend, which of course we'll talk about. But aye, it, was, it was a really good and a really important substitution, I felt, in the match. Aye, definitely. We will come on to the draw now. So it was made this morning. Tony, I, I know we were speaking about Last night, who we would like in the draw, there was certainly more favourable teams that we could have got. But if, if you're going to want to go far in these competitions and you're going to need to play against some good teams, and Celtic were drawn against by Leverkusen, Real Betis, and our old foes, Ferenc Varos, it's to be honest, pretty, a really tough group, and it's going to take some getting out of. I know previously we talked a group where like a Lazio and Rennes in it, so I would never write us off, but. It's a very tough group, just looking at it from the outset. What was your thoughts when you seen the draw this morning? Well, the first one was obviously we get Leverkusen. Obviously, as four back when Leverkusen played Rangers. The full podcast kitty on Leverkusen. Leverkusen minus a goal. And I think it was Kai Havertz to score and Leverkusen to win. Somebody said last night they wanted a goal at Leverkusen. I says I did they? I think they're a really good team. I don't know how they are now, 18 months down the line, but they were very good when they played Rangers. So a team I did want to avoid, obviously, will come up against Frimpong again. And we know that he's a very quick, <laughs> quick player and he's a good player, I think, as well. So, But again, he's got his weaknesses that hopefully we can exploit. And yeah, I'll bet it's back to Seville. A lot of people will be, will be interested in that trip if it's able to go ahead. And then there's a bit of revenge for Fenenvaros. It would be great to beat them and show up how useless the last manager was. So I think I think we could get through. I think it'll be a, a really tough job. I think Leverkusen are probably odds on to top the group. And I think Betis, Betis will be the main contenders for second. And I guess Fenenvaros probably aren't any mugs of their Hungarian champions. So, but you, you just take who you get and... I'm looking forward to it. I'm hoping that we can get trips. I'd love to go to Germany and I'd love to go to Seville as well. I, I thought Lars would have got you banned from the entire EU after your last European trip with Celtic. Fuck Lars and fuck Denmark. Fuck Copenhagen. Fuck Eddie Howe, I know. 
Ah, oh, fucking there, right? That's a whole yeah. model for this season, I think. Danny, Tony's just spoke a bit about it. We've got a team from the Bundesliga, a team from La Liga, and then a team that knocked us at the Champions League last season. So, to, to be blunt about it, it could have been easier. What was your thoughts when you seen the draw? I wasn't surprised. We always seem to end up with a right tough group. It's meant to be the Europa League. It's meant to be second-tier competition, and yet we always seem to draw teams for the top five leagues. And it's probably the two worst like, nations to get teams for because... I mean, the Spanish teams take the Europa League really seriously. They see it as a way into the Champions League. They probably treat the European tournaments with more respect than anybody. And Leverkusen are a right good side, I know. I think they've got the boy Sheik up front that caused Scotland trouble. He seems to be coming right onto a game now. He scored a couple at the weekend and it'll be two tough games. Then you get finished Faros, but that'll be, we should put that right, hopefully. If we don't, then who knows what will happen but it's a tough draw and I was basically just I was expecting it but tougher than, than I would have liked but like Tony says you just need to take who you get and see how you go I think it'll probably be the making of this team this team this group stage but we'll see what happens Tony you got something you want to add i just seen on Twitter that I don't know if he's mentioned this and I've not been paying attention that Everton have sounded is out for Edward Sky Sports News are reporting that they know that apparently Everton are interested in signing Edward and they're currently the favourites. But that'll be the Jack O'Marcus deal then. Going for Rufa Selig, making probably much chance they'll get for Edward. He'll probably go see, to Everton. See, the thing is, see if you've got new Everton, Ruben Kazan, and I think it was Bordeaux that was mentioned. So they, you could sort of get up close to 20 million if you're going to have three teams going after them now like Celtic this is the time they need to just bounce clubs against each other and get a bit more on the go I'd take to see him go I thought I thought he completely changed the game last night in our favour and I thought he changed the game in our favour last week as well when he came on off the bench and the Marys I think I mean Kyogo could link up really well going forward and he, he looked quite hungry last night he looked in the mood and I'd be got to see him go I, I think most fans would be this one, I think the thing is, Ange was spot on when he came out the other day and he says, just look at, like, he says in his press conference this morning that he even he doesn't know if Christy and Edward will still be there come Tuesday, but you could see, like, in their play and in their celebration, like, how there are no players of down tools by any means, and uh, I think whatever happens now, Celtic fans are only going to turn against them, whether they stay or go, like, it's... It is going to be interesting. Just at this point, I'd like to throw in that we are doing a live Twitter space on Tuesday night as the transfer deadline day comes to an end. We will look at Celtic's ins and outs and any sort of last-minute deals and rumours that are going about. So be sure to join us over on our Twitter for that. Just go to twitter.com forward slash podtims if you're wanting more information. But back to the Europa League draw, Andy. As as was mentioned, it's not the same Leverkusen team that destroyed Rangers a few seasons ago. There's no good guys like Havertz or even Leon Bailey or Lars or Sven Bender. Like, but it's still a very strong team and it's a very strong group that we've been drawn in again. It's a really difficult group and I mean I there's no there's no good Havertz and Leon Bailey's obviously moved to the Premier League now but uh, I don't know if Danny already mentioned it but they did just demolish Mitch and Gladbach 4-0 in the other day so I mean it, it's they're no a bad side. They're a fucking very, very good side who will be the favourites to top the group. I would be very surprised if they don't top the group. Obviously, Schick will be up front for them who a lot of people who are interested in Scotland have obviously seen the, the damage that he caused this. I mean, and he had a very, very good Euros. They've got a lot of players who can cause you a lot of problems. And again, defensively, they're strong as well. Signed that backer for PSG. Like Jonathan has been there for a long time. And obviously, we know that Frimpong's their right back and while some people felt he was a bit, he could, wasn't always the strongest defensively, you know that he, he can cause you problems going forward. So they are automatically the, the favourites to win the group, and probably rightly so. And that has been said already, but these teams don't fuck about in these competitions. They don't look at it as the same arrogance you get with an English team, perhaps, to just try to see it as a lesser competition. That's not the same for them. And they'll be looking to, to win the group and obviously get themselves through to the next round as soon as possible. Best. A team who, they, they've always played good football. I know they signed uh, Willie and Jose for Real Sociedad, who's a big Brazilian striker who I, I think could cause problems. But I've always said that Selic at home, I, I, I fancy to have a go and on your night, who knows? And again, Fenish Varos. Can I confess to knowing a lot about them, given that obviously it's that time passed since we've played them, so I don't know how different their team is looking. I think it was... Young boys that put them out the Champions League group, somebody we've come up against before. But you would still fancy them, obviously, know their way about 
a European tie and, and probably they'll be looking at us fancy and taking something off us. It's there's points to be won. It's a difficult group, but and I wish <laughs> I wish we could have some of that fucking hun luck in these draws. I don't know how they consistently get easy routes. We spoke about this before. It's it's as if they fucking handpick their groups at times, but it is what it is. If you play to play in these competitions, you're gonna to need to play teams of this quality sooner or later. So you send them on. I'm looking forward to them and as Tony said, hopefully get a a couple of good trips out of and a couple of good runs in the competition and just ideally say like our Andrew's back say like he's back and we just improve and I, I, I just know he, he was going to fancy it as well he's going to look to be testing himself against these teams and, and a lot of the players who if they're the hashies or the bad is it's their first taste of the official football in Europe I feel like there's no qualifiers no that it's, it's proper group stage football and I'm sure they'll be relishing the chance to go and try sort of pit themselves against these sides and it's just a challenge that I'm sure they are, but I know I'm looking forward to it. I think we're all looking forward to it. We will preview it in more detail next month before the first match day, but that brings an end to the first part of this doubleheader episodes that we're doing. So I thanks to Manscaped for, for supporting this podcast. Remember, you can go to manscaped.com and use the code trim for tims for 20% off and free shipping. Thanks to everybody who's doing that, and we will speak to you in the next episode. Thank you for listening.